Are you bored of building tool? Ever wondered what the buildings that don't make money do? Have you ever been totally dependent on your realm priest? Have you ever tinkered with feudal contracts? CK3, the levy strategy. Because if they can't match 80% of your total men, they can't mount a rebellion, no matter how much they dislike you. For this, we need to be in a forest. Why the forest? Because you can build forest forts. Why forest forts? Because it is the only defensive building that provides levies. Why? I don't know. Amazingly in CK3, the fertile, dark, dense forest and the lush, frozen tiger have the third highest potential base levies, just behind farmlands and floodplains. But farmlands are few and far between, and floodplains are only found with clan governments, and I needed to be feudal for this to work. Now I chose Russia, more specifically Novogod, as it is in the forest and feudal. I wanted to get this ball rolling and not waste time getting out of tribal. That said, I forgot how painful it was to be surrounded by pagans. Once they smell weakness, they will crush you. They only pay for their troops with prestige. You, however, will need money. Speaking of money, you won't have any, because remember, this is a levy strategy. Originally, I foolishly believed that levies had no upkeep. Ever. Because some fellow YouTuber, not naming names, stated that there was no impact in raising them. Turns out, they cost 3 gold per thousand levies, so when you start getting into the tens of thousands of levies, this starts to hurt. To overcome this massive issue of funding, I turned to God, but more precisely, building temples. As orthodoxy is theocratic, it means that if we have a realm priest on our side, we can get up to 50% of all the taxes he generates. On top of this, he'll provide 100% of his levies, in line with our strategy, proving a huge boost to our non-existent finances and total levy size. This is also where another bonus of being orthodox comes in, as having communion, members confess their sins. And in this world, there are a lot of sinners. Not me, mind, as I don't have any money to be forgiven. So much for blessed are the meek. However, Orthodoxy has many faithful, and at Patriarch, a lot of listening. So I once again come asking for that financial support. Now, on to my holdings. As we need to maximise our levies, I went for the following. Forest forts, military camps, barracks, and outposts. With all these buildings, it gives a total base levies when maxed out of 2,300 men per holding and exactly zero income, with the oft avoided royal armories giving a percentage boost to that total. In terms of culture, there was much to be done. Starting out as Russian, nothing contributed to my levy size, but traditions such as charismatic would help me blend and medicant mystics would up my piety. I wanted to be in control of my own culture and increase the size of the mob, so I diverged, picking Bellicose for that extra 10% levy size, and adding strength in numbers to get a further 10%. To complete my culture, I needed an injection of Lithuanian blood, which had forest fighters, which gave me another 10% of my levy and increased my supply limit, sacred groves, which gave me more piety every time I built, and forest wardens, which made building in woods cheaper. Finally, my peasants were wood elves, and I had left the culture map a complete mess. Finally, we get to the meat of this plan. Feudal contracts. Much maligned, but great. Yes, if you turn the screw too tight, you are hated. But this is what levies are for. We don't need them to like us. We also don't need their levies either. So we max out the tax on them, minimize the troops, and implement scuttage, or scutage, and then we are truly fleecing our vassals. Everything has been set up. And there it was. I had more men than any other state in the world. My vassals didn't have enough men to launch a faction against me. Despite my cruelty. Despite my extortion. You can see here that the total buffs to my levy size. 115% increase to the capital's total. More if I had finished innovations and actually had a leader with good marshal. Also, know that being a torturer gives an extra 10%. Anyway, it was interesting to have such a healthy income, despite barely generating any myself. That said, it was not without its difficulties. It may surprise you that peasants are terrible fighters. 
and I needed often overwhelming numbers to defeat my enemies. To make matters worse, a modifier in combat called the Combat With meant the bigger my army was than theirs, the less damage each peasant did. And bear in mind, you can't buff peasants. You can only get more, which just exacerbates the issue. Furthermore, being in the frozen forest with low development, despite my cultural advances, meant unless I spread my troops, they died in droves to attrition. And due to my incompetence, they died a lot. And once it started dying, nothing was to stop those factions from firing. Everybody was going to take their chance. So you can see where this is going. An army of peasants equal in size to a proper army using heavy infantry is not going to do well. With this death spiral, I constantly needed allies to bail me out, and what little money I did have was spent on mercenaries. And you had to spend your money quick on mercenaries, because once the vassals had gone, I'd lost my income, and the upkeep for having every abled man at war was costing me over a hundred coin a month. To ensure stability and sound finances, I needed long periods of peace, and a frequent endorsement from the Patriarch, because every succession was a disaster as every brown priest often took a dim view on my useless sons, subsequently losing a huge chunk of levies and tax revenue immediately. And you can guess what that led to, another rebellion. So that was it, high risk, some reward. More vassals meant more money, which meant more peasants were required. But nonetheless, a truly unique way to play. I give this strategy a 10. A 10 out of 23. 10 being the number of times my vassals are rebelled against my tyranny, and 23 being the number of times I begged the Patriarch for money.